Hi, so a question I've been asked very often is will this ink go through an airbrush, 0.2, 0.3 micron air, uh, millimeter airbrush hole? And I've not known actually, so I've always answered, I don't know. Um, so I got hold of an airbrush to give it a go, because people ask these things, I like to help. Now, it won't go through just by itself. And that's no real surprise when you think about airbrushes and how they actually work, then it's going to dry really, really quickly. So you need to add a couple of things to it in order to make it go through. Now, it's not that difficult what you have to add to it. What you have to add is this stuff, which is thinner. This thinner is made out of deionized water and isopropanol alcohol in a ratio of 30% uh, isopropanol alcohol to 70% deionized water. And that makes you your thinner. So the first thing you need is make up some thinner. The next thing you need is some washing up liquid. Now I used fairy as it happens and that seemed to work really well. So you need some ink, some thinner and some washing up liquid. Now all you actually do is to um, 25 millilitres of this, add 5 millilitres of this and 25 millilitres of this. Give it a good old shake. Now a little bit of agglomeration will go on. That is some of the particles will stick together. So what you need to do is filter it. Now I filtered it with a bit of this. It's um, screen printing mesh and the size is um, 230 uh, mesh size US and that makes it about 63 microns. So anything that came through that is smaller than 63 microns big. And I just poured the ink through that and all the little bits that were left over I washed away leaving me with an ink. And there it is. So in there we've got that airbrushing ink. And let's give it a go and see how it works. Now I have to tell you, I am not an airbrush artist. I only do this because of the conductive ink. And as you can see, it actually works surprisingly well. Now you have to leave that to dry, obviously. Uh, it works better in short, sharp bursts. If you give it a long burst, the air pressure di dies off quite quickly and the ink will dry on the needle. You have to wash your airbrush out. So short, sharp bursts are much better than trying to coat it in one long burst. Just do it in short, sharp shots. So all we have to do now is leave that to dry. So here is the dried specimen. I've burnished it over again with the old plastic spoon trick. And we're going to do a bit of square resistance on it using a square of copper probe clamp that down. That's on the kilo ohm setting. So what you're getting there is 2.64 kilo ohms. Now obviously 2.64 K is quite a high resistance, but when you think about what the um, thickness of the film there, it's a single coat of airbrush ink on paper. That's actually pretty impressive. So if you want a lower resistance, what you would do is just spray it one coat, let it dry, spray it another coat, let it dry. And obviously, more thin coats is better than one thick coat. If you try to put one thick coat on, it will run. If you put thinner coats on and let them dry in between, you'll get a really nice job. So, to answer the question, can this ink be airbrushed? Clearly, the answer is yes, and that's how you do it. So, hopefully that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.